One of the greatest lessons I've learned from my mentors is that success in research goes far beyond technical skills. It's not just about designing studies or analyzing data. It's about mastering the process, building resilience, and understanding how to navigate the often overlooked aspects of research. In this video, I'll share seven principles to becoming a successful researcher, insights I've gained from incredible mentors in my own journey. These principles will help you focus on what truly matters. Number one, learn the process and execution of research. Most junior researchers, whether it's medical students, residents, and even earlier career faculty, tend to focus on the end point of research, getting a publication. It's understandable because pu publications are tangible achievements that boost your CV and help you progress in academia. But here's the thing, research isn't just about the destination, it's about mastering the process. And this is something very few people talk about. When I went back to grad school to formally study clinical research, I learned a lot about technical skills like study design, statistics, and research methods. But there was one glaring gap. No one teaches you the process of research execution. They don't teach you how to manage timelines, navigate team dynamics, troubleshoot when things go wrong, or keep a project moving forward despite competing priorities. These critical aspects of research only come from experience and often by working on someone else's project. This is why approaching principal investigators or PI can be tricky because PIs are hesitant to let new researchers join your project because they can't guarantee authorship. Authorship requires substantial contributions to a project and just collecting a few data does not meet that bar. But if you frame your request differently by emphasizing that your primary goal is to learn the process rather than demand authorship, PIs are much more likely to let you in. And once you're part of the project, pay attention not just to the research itself, but to the meta-learning opportunities. Observe how the PI manages their team. How do they assign tasks? How do they troubleshoot problems? How do they motivate team members and ensure deadlines are met? Learning these hidden skills will set you apart when it's time to lead your own projects. Number two, narrow the performance gap. Every researcher starts with a gap between where they are now and where they want to be. And this is the performance gap. It's what separates aspiring researchers from those who consistently publish papers and secure grants. The key to success lies in identifying this gap and working deliberately to close it. The performance gap exists because most people don't know the exact sequence of steps required to achieve their goals. For example, if your goal is to publish a paper, it's not enough to simply write. You need to un understand the entire process, formulating a research question, conducting a literature review, designing the study, collecting data, analyzing the results, and then finally writing the manuscript. Each step has its own set of challenges, and the more efficiently you can navigate them, the faster you'll achieve your goals. Some people appear to progress faster than others. That isn't because they're inherently more talented, it's because they have figured out the sequence of steps and learned to execute them effectively. And your goal should be to identify the steps in your own process and get faster at executing them. And this means breaking larger goals into smaller manageable tasks, tracking your progress, and continuously improving how you work. And remember, the sooner you narrow the performance gap, the sooner you'll see results. Number three, don't outsource your thinking to AI tools. AI tools have become incredibly popular in academia, offering to streamline tasks like examining writing, literature reviews, but relying too heavily on these tools can actually hinder your growth as a researcher. And here's why. Research isn't just about producing a paper or mapping out study gaps. It's truly about developing and refining your own thinking. Take literature reviews, for example. On the surface, the purpose of conducting a literature review seems straightforward. Find a study gap. But in reality, conducting literature review is about building your own knowledge base. And by reading and critically analyzing existing studies, you gain a deeper understanding of your field. And this depth is what allows you to formulate meaningful, impactful research. If you let an AI tool do this for you, you're skipping the most important part of the process, learning. And the same goes for academic writing. A paper isn't just a collection of words, it's a reflection of your ideas your logic, your ability to communicate complex concepts. If you delegate too much of the writing process to AI, your word might look polished on the surface, but it will lack the depth and originality that make it truly impactful. AI tools can be useful for specific tasks, 
like organizing references, finding the articles, but they should not replace critical thinking. Use them as assistants, not substitutes. That way, it ensures your work remains authentic and intellectually rigorous. Number four, do the uncomfortable thing first. Research is full of tasks that feel uncomfortable. Calling participants, applying for approval from IRB or ethics committee, collecting data, following up on collaborators, or tackling a difficult section on a manuscript. These are the tasks we tend to avoid because they are challenging or require confrontation. But here's the truth. The tasks you often avoid are often the ones that matter most. Discomfort is a signal. It's your brain's way of telling you that something's important but challenging. And the longer you avoid these tasks, the more they create bottlenecks that stall your progress. For example, procrastinating on contacting participants can delay your entire study. Similarly, avoiding revisions on a paper because you're intimidated by reviewer feedback can delay publication by months. The solution is simple. Tackle the uncomfortable task first and make it your habit to act immediately whenever you feel resistance. This approach not only helps you overcome procrastination, but also builds momentum. By clearing the most challenging task early, you free yourself up to focus on the rest of your work with less stress and more energy. Number five, adopt bottleneck thinking. When you're stuck on a project, the first question you should ask is, where is the bottleneck? A bottleneck is a specific point where progress is blocked. Identifying it allows you to focus your efforts on the area that will have the biggest impact on moving the project forward. For example, if you are struggling with conducting literature review, break it down. Is the problem finding papers, choosing the right ones, or processing and understanding what you've read? Each of these issues require a different solution. Without identifying the exact bottleneck, you risk wasting time on tactics that don't address the root problem. Bottleneck thinking isn't just about identifying problems, it's about solving them efficiently. For instance, Many researchers use AI tools to find papers for their literature reviews. But if the real bottleneck is in synthesizing and understanding the papers, these tools won't help. In fact, they might make the problem worse by overwhelming you with too much information. The key is to focus on clearing the bottleneck that's holding you back. Once you do, the rest of the process becomes much smoother. Number six, learn the difference between strategy and tactics. Tactics are the small actions or hacks you use to get something done. Strategy, on the other hand, is the bigger picture, a thoughtful plan that considers the sequence of steps needed to achieve a long-term goal. For example, a tactic might be using a new tool to speed up data analysis. A strategy would be deciding to collaborate on a project that aligns with your long-term research goals, even if it does not offer immediate rewards. Strategy requires foresight. It's about understanding what actions will position you for success in the future. Many people focus too much on tactics because they offer immediate gratification. But without a clear strategy, even the best tactics won't take you far. Always ask yourself, am I being tactical or strategic? Both are important, but strategy ensures that your efforts are aligned with your long-term vision. Number seven, focus on throughput. Research is like a manufacturing process. It's all about throughput. In a factory, throughput refers to the number of finished products that are ready to be sold. It does not matter how many car doors or engines you have built if no complete cars roll off the assembly line. And the same principle applies to research. Ideas and half-finished projects don't count. What matters is how many projects you complete and bring to publication or grant submission or some other tangible endpoint. This is the only way to measure your progress and impact. To improve your throughput, focus on moving projects from one stage to the next. For example, if you have finished collecting data, shift your attention to data analysis. If you have completed your analysis, start drafting your manuscript. Make it a habit to track your progress weekly and ensure you're consistently moving projects closer to completion. By focusing on throughput, you'll not only finish more projects, but also build the momentum and confidence needed to tackle even bigger goals. One thing my mentors have always emphasized is that clinical research is a long game. These seven principles aren't just tips, but tools that can help you build a meaningful and sustainable career in research. I'll see you in the next video.